when the 2018 regime change happened in Armenia, there were many speculations about the future geopolitical direction of the new government, specifically that Armenia was going to make a U-turn to the West. Of course, the new Pashinyan government at the time tried to dispel those rumors and said that they were going to continue the geopolitical uh, vector of Armenia. But after the 2020 war, and especially after the ethnic cleansing of Artsakh or Nagorno-Karabakh in September 2023, it seems that Armenia is making even more accelerated steps in a direction away from its traditional security cooperation within the CSTO and Russia, in what Pashinyan's government calls security diversification, but which in reality is essentially a divorce, a U-turn, or any other term that you know you can uh, replace that with. It is important to highlight that in a recent MPG poll in Yerevan, over 58% of Armenians do not see these moves as corresponding to Armenia's security interests, and only 37 percent agree with the government. So the government is essentially going against the grain on this one. All this is being done in the context of constant and increasingly open and aggressive threats from Azerbaijan about attacking Armenia and forcing a corridor through Sunik, among other things. In reality, they have sites on all of Armenia through Aliyev's Western Azerbaijan concept. Meanwhile, Russian and Iranian officials define their relations as very close. More recently, these relations have been elevated to a strategic alliance. I mean, they were, I believe, a strategic alliance before, but they have increased military cooperation and it has become more strategic in a sense. So how is Iran viewing Armenia's potential change of the security architecture, especially since Armenia is basically moving away from Russia while Iran is tightening its relations with Russia? You know, when it comes to Iranian-Armenian relations, all the time, we repeat two main points. The first point is that Iran doesn't like the way that Armenia is accelerating and approaching Western countries. You know, talking about joining to European Union or talking about uh, you know military drills with NATO is not something that uh, Iranian policymakers wants to hear from Europe. So all the time that uh, we receive officials from Yerevan, we tell them that the security of the region must be guarded through the countries of the region. And I know that all the time they come and say that we know your concerns and we respect your concerns, but we want to diversify our security partners. And they talk about that how Russia betrayed Armenia during uh, the recent tensions in Arsakh and that you know that leads to the the sad happenings in the summer. But Iranian logic is that if you want to keep your security, you have to depend on Russia and Iran. That and all the time we say that the Western countries they never care about your security. They just would want to kick Russia out of the region. And first of all, it was in Balkan region. In Eastern Europe, they, because of uh, Russia's wrong policies and misleading policies, and because of the wrong perception of Russia toward West, because Putin at the beginning, he was thinking that he can work with uh, Europeans and United States. You know that even he thought that he can join NATO. But right now, they know that Western countries are not satisfied with this kind of Policy. They want to attack Russia and then they want to increase their influence after East Europe in South Caucasus and then Central Asia and they want to surrender Russia. And Russia right now, after the Ukraine war, Russia understands this and trying to change its policy. But uh, this changing is so gradual because of different lobby groups in Russia. And, uh, you know, because I don't know why, but Russia is so slow in understanding the realities and changing its policy. And Russians are so stubborn and somehow I think they are so selfish and they think that they can change the things, even they lose everything. You know, this is so yes. dangerous. You know, I talked to some of them. I talked to many Armenians about Russian foreign policy. They think that they even if after they lose everything, they can 
restore it. And I think it's a wrong idea because we are watching what Turkey is doing. We treated with Russians with respect in South Caucasus. We tried to coordinate our policies with Russians in South Caucasus. But what was the result? Turkey came and forced Russians out of the region. We see what is happening. In, but keep it beside, we have to say that the Armenian policy that cooperating with Europeans to force Russians out of Armenia and then the region is very, very dangerous. I think that in last year, or I think it was that some elements in Armenian army tried to organize somehow a coup against Pashinyan, but Russians didn't help them. And I think right now Russians trying to topple Pashinyan but it's so late for them because right now they don't have enough power and they don't have the courage and then they have no prog program and a schedule to do the right thing in army. You know, so they are losing the opportunities and because of the wrong policies of Russians, uh, Iranians, uh, they don't know how to deal with the crisis in Armenia. So the first thing is that we ask Armenians to keep away from Europeans. It's the right of Armenia to keep good relation with every country. But uh, I'm not sure that whether France or other Western countries want to keep the borders of Armenia. They want to send Russians out. And the second thing that all the time we say to Armenian government that they must increase their uh, relations with Iran beyond the economy or beyond the trade. And we need more security cooperations. We need, uh, we need to launch joint military maneuver together. And this is something that all the time they avoid. I think if we do these things, we don't think it's a good idea that we limit our cooperation to purchasing weapons by Armenia. We have to increase. I guarantee to you that if Armenia accept that start a military maneuver with Iran, and many things will change in the mind of Aliyev, in the mind of Turkey, in the mind of Europeans, in the mind of Israel. And this really helps the security of Armenia, Iran, and the region. But unfortunately, your government doesn't accept that because I think that they feel that accepting all the things that Aliyev wanted doesn't help Armenia to keep it borders. Because you see that Pashinyan gave Arsak to Baku, but it didn't stop them. Right now, they are talking about enclave. Right now, they are talking about Western Azerbaijan. Right now, they say that we want to go to Nakhchivan through Armenia, and uh, we don't accept that Armenia want to do custom checking and so on. So Pashinyan under, uh, gradually understands that accepting all the things that Baku wants doesn't solve the problem. So I, I hope that he understand that he must increase his corporations and especially military corporations with Iran. I hope, hope you I... enjoyed this clip from our podcast. Click on the link to listen to the entire episode. And remember, your support helps us get the word out. So please donate to us at podcasts.groom.org or scan the barcode on your screen. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our content with your network. Thanks in advance.